A lesser known yet big time saving feature of the Risa Revit link is the ability to automatically annotate your design results within the Revit model. By annotating the design results automatically, you're able to mitigate risk by eliminating that human error that comes with tagging the beam sizes and end reactions manually. Here you can see we've got our Risa floor model. We've already got our design results. We've integrated it with Risa 3D already. So you can already see a summary of our end reactions and our design results here in Risa floor. So what I'm going to demonstrate to you guys today is how to import this Risa floor model into Revit and then go one step further and then automatically annotate our and tag all of our beams with the member sizes, the number of studs, and the end reactions. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to our Revit model here. Okay, so I've got a blank Revit model. I went ahead and just started this from the standard structural template. To import my Risa model, all I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to my add-ins tab here and I'm going to choose the import from Risa option. If you don't have these Risa options available to you on your add-ins tab in Revit, just visit our website uh, secure.risa.com and you can download the Risa Revit link and you should see these uh, add-ins appear at the top of your Revit screen. So I'm going to go ahead and choose import from Risa. And then here we're presented with a dialog of all the options that we have uh, when we bring in the import. So we've got an option for where we want the coordinates to be relative to the X axis, the import process. So you've got, an, uh, uh, you've got a choice between whether or not we update geometry and sizes. Maybe we only want to update the sizes. Um, Revit levels. So it's going to look at each of the different four levels that exist within uh, Risa. And then the elements we want to link with Risa. So the critical ones here, uh, we've got all of those components that you're really able to draw and model within Risa. But the one that we're really interested in today is this beam end reaction. So whenever you're importing a model from Risa floor that has saved results, you'll want to make sure this beam end reactions option is checked there. Uh, there are more options here on the advanced tab. We're not going to spend too much time digging into these today, but there is further uh, more granularity you can go into if you want, if you need to. So I'm going to just stick to that general tab here today. And what we're going to do is I'm actually going to browse for our Risa, our Risa floor model here. You do have the option to import both a Risa floor or a Risa 3D model. Today we're working on a, a floor model that was integrated with 3D. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose that floor model since it originated in floor there. And then I'm going to go ahead and choose OK. All right, so this is just a single story structure. It's pretty simple. So the import process shouldn't take us too long. What we're actually going to see once this completes is we're going to be presented with a summary of the import data for what the model actually read and we can understand um, everything that was imported from Risa. So as that finishes, what we're actually presented with here is a little summary, a Risa Revit link report that summarizes all of the elements that were brought into the model. So you can see we've got that single diaphragm from Revit floors, that, that one story like we mentioned. We've got beams and columns and then we have our material type. So I'm going to go ahead and just choose OK. Typically if there was an error in our log, we would have seen a summary of that in that report right there. Once we import, we're actually presented with this Risa import summary. So right now we can see everything in my model is kind of uh, tinted that color green. So that's all these new elements that were brought in. So if we were to round trip and go back and forth between Risa and Revit multiple times, this import summary will change and you'll see different elements highlighted. So if elements get added, those will be highlighted and you'll see those changes get highlighted uh, whenever you decide to go back and forth. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch on over here to our floor level. So we are looking at a plan view of our structure now. So if you recall, we did have a few moment frames in our Risa floor model. So only in a few of these members are going to actually have moment at the ends of their reactions. So if you recall, I believe it was actually, let's see here, I'm going to go through and I'm actually going to select these members here. I believe it was the ones on the end. And so I'm just going through pressing tab and selecting these different beam elements. And then I had a couple frames uh, up there at the top and on the bottom. And so just one more and I'll select 
we can see that I've got a summary of those six elements selected there. What I'm gonna do is actually scroll down a little bit here on that structural tab. I'm gonna change this start and end connection here to be a moment frame. That way we can actually see uh, those, those moment frames indicated on plan there. So you can see the moment connection is indicated on plan. Uh, if we select another beam actually, you can see, we'll just scroll down a little bit and show you that we do have a summary of the actual reactions that came in from RISA. So under this structural analysis section here, you've got the RISA label. That'll be consistent if we were to go back into RISA floor, we'll see M2 there. And then you've got that start and end reaction. Let me go ahead and select actually a, a moment frame member here so we can see what that moment looks like. So you can see we've got a start and an end moment here. So these reactions that were brought in, these are gonna be those factored end reactions. Those will be used for your connection design. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and select all of my moment frame beams again here. And the reason I'm selecting my moment frame beams specifically is because they're actually gonna get a little bit different annotation than what you would get for just the members with out moment. So um, now that I have those selected, I'm gonna come up to my annotate tab. And then there's a beam annotations option. So we'll go ahead and select that. Um, so right now, here's where we have the option. This is all selected beams in current plans. So right now I have all my moment frame beams selected in the current plan. So the tags that I set up here are gonna be uh, the ones that get indicated on those elements there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and choose first. Uh, what do I want the center of my beam on the top to be indicated by? So I'll go ahead and choose these three little options here. And then from this drop down menu, you see we've got a couple different options, but what we need to do is we need to actually load in some of these reset tags. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna choose load structural framing tag. And then that prompts me to my beam tags. So if it doesn't automatically populate here to your beam tags folder, the way that you'll get there is just gonna go through your documents folder and then to Risa, to your Risa Revit link for 2020, cause that's the Revit version that I'm in and then open up that beam tags folder. And that'll give you all of those beam tag options from Risa. So here for the center of my beam, I'm actually gonna want to just include the beam size. So we'll go with that standard beam size. I'll go ahead and choose okay. And I'll wanna make sure that we choose that standard beam size option. And then for the bottom, I'm gonna wanna actually indicate the camber and the stud count. So if you recall, we had that option here, we've got uh, we'll load that structural framing tab and you can see the studs and camber option here under our beam tags folder. So I'll go ahead and choose okay. And then let's make sure we get that studs and camber selected. And then we do kind of the similar process here for the remaining. So now we're gonna want uh, our shear tag. So if I go ahead and load in our Risa start reactions, that's gonna be your shear reactions. And then let's just keep making sure every time you wanna make sure you select that. And then this time at the base, let's include our moment. So for our moment frames, we're actually gonna to wanna to import the moment. So this time you're gonna choose Risa start moments, select open, and then let's make sure we got the moment selected. Okay, and then we're gonna mim mimic that over here on the right hand side. So on the right hand side, let's load in just that standard end reaction. So that's gonna be our shear reaction. And then just make sure it's selected from the drop down again. And then lastly, let's go ahead and get the member uh, moment at the end reaction. So the Risa end moments. So go ahead and choose open and then select it from the drop down menu. And then we can go ahead and choose okay. And then that automatically populates my member end reaction. So you can see for my W8 by 31, I've got 42 kip feet and 12 kips of my shear reaction there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try and go ahead and quickly select my remaining members here. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and just box around all of my options here. And then I'm going to press shift and then go ahead and just deselect the items that I do not want to annotate. So that's gonna include some of those columns as well as my moment frames that I already have indicated. And so as I go along here, Notice I might have accidentally actually excluded some of these members here, so I wanna come back and make sure I include them. So I'll just press control now on my keyboard and make sure these are added in. 
it's hard to tell with the coloring here, but it looks like they're getting selected. So I'm just go ahead and select a few just to be sure. We'll really find out the test will be whenever we actually come and annotate. So let me get rid of that column highlight there. Okay. So now that we have all of our other beams selected, I'm going to come back to my annotate tab here, beam annotations. And now everything has been remembered since the last time we loaded it in. You really only need to load those in once. In this instance, we don't have any member uh, end moments. So I'm just going to actually come and say none. Switch both of these to none. So that makes it a little bit easier. Go ahead and choose OK. And then we'll apply that to all the selected beams in the current plan and choose OK. All right, there you go. Now you can see all the remaining member reactions the actual member size, and then the camber, or I'm sorry, the studs have been loaded in. So we didn't have any studs on our moment frames. So you can see we've got some stud design here for the rest of our members. So it's a really quick way you can import your RISA model into Revit and include annotations for your member end reactions. For more information, visit risa.com.